Robert. Uh, I don't know, Robert, do you have an income like a, you just said affiliate, so I'm trying to work that into my brain because we know action, cash is king right now is what all the entrepreneurs, even that guy uh, that talks, uh, he's got a, owns a football thing on the shark. What is his name? The dark-headed guy. You, do you ever watch Shark? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Wonderful. Um, the other one, he's the ball-headed guy, the, the, the football dude at the end. God, how oh, can Mark I forget Cuban? his name? Mark Cuban. There you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He came on, and he comes on a lot of these shows in the stock market and stuff like that. But he was investing for a couple of weeks, and uh, so. But you know, things are going up and down internationally. So you mentioned affiliate, so that made my mind start wandering. But let's talk about we can help people, and a lot of people they'll say they don't watch TV, but you can. Really, they'll slip in certain television shows. Like, I love to study people. I watch Survivor. I ain't going to lie. And I watch The Bachelor because I just happen to watch, like, younger people and watch how they chew. So I guess I'm an analyst still. But how can we do analyst, affiliate, and TV and what people like? And I like to do polls, and I like to know statistics, but not everybody's into the nuts and bolts. We are interfacing, you and I, to other when people. When you're talking about affiliates, most people don't realize okay. Amazon started off and still has got an affiliate model that goes with it. If you really? want to recommend, you know, you could become an affiliate of Amazon and make, you know, I don't know how much they pay, if it's 5 6%, not a lot, but uh, they've got an affiliate model. Affiliate basically just uh, talks about, or is just a way that if I introduce you to buying from a certain company, I make a small commission. You know, I've, you know, worked on affiliates and used the, you know, most network marketing or multi-level marketing have got a leveraged business model that goes along with them. And again, there's good and bad companies, you know, in MLM, just like there's good and bad companies, you know, in business. You know, you take a look at certain companies that are going out of business. So an affiliate mar- affiliate program is just something that um, it's like if I tell you to go eat at this restaurant, the restaurant realizes that rather than spending money on advertising, if I use word of mouth um, and, and pay people to uh, guide me to traffic or guide me to customers, not traffic, customers, people that come in and spend money on my establishment rather than spending an advertising, I'll, spend, I'll give it back to the person that introduced me to this customer. That's really what an affiliate is. Well, what, uh, you know, these places that are hurting right now, they don't have their waitresses in their service industry. My daughter's in hospitality and she's actually. Uh, having to work, but they cut her back to just two days a week. And, you know, people were only working 32 hours a week. Uh, well, a lot of them in Gulf Breeze, where I live, it's sort of a, it's a good area code. A zip, is it area code? 32563 is the zip code. And I noticed in the internationally, whether it's thrown up or not, different people in different zip codes have different jobs, and especially here in America. And I'm wondering how we're all going to find a place and space to work together. So would we, in an affiliate program, let's say you and me with ACO Club, we set this up and we want to keep in touch with people because we're in communications and we're spokespeople or we're people that have a voice or we communicate, folks, okay, communicate information. So we're educators, and I have Teresa J. Morris Ministries, which is licensed to do business as a ministry of education, a minister of education. And then on the other hand, uh, I guess American Communications Online is the holding company or the company we can do all things allowed by law basically but it's american communications online ergo aco club and the club is by invitation only right now but you know i did meet sam walton he carried my groceries in when he opened sam's i believe out in hawaii he came out and grabbed my buggy my husband i my husband was always saying at that time he's passed he says you meet How do you do that in the world? You always meet the person in charge. And I said, I don't know. He said, well, who would know he was going to come out and get your buggy and talk to you and tell you I'm Sam Walton? I said, I have no clue. I don't know. I just know the universe gives me always. See you at the top. Zig Ziglar told me that once, and I had no clue who he was. (laughs) So (laughs) I got a a free ticket or something from – 
Marianne Mobley and her husband and Houston or something. So I went, but I don't get it. I, I so help us. Does affiliates they they like to be with the people that either have all the money or have all the luck in the world? Like why would I have paid? And somebody paid for me five thousand dollars to go do the Tony Robbins thing, uh, the, get the big wow and the win. So and then Tony Robbins was going to be a speaker, and then my girlfriend's been on the stage. And open with Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra, but they would never guess it was Janet Lesson, but her with her husband Alexander Sasha Lesson. So, what are we doing here? And what I'm really amazed. Why are you and I talking? I mean, it means something. It, like you said, build it and they will come. But it's bigger than that, even. So, you think affiliate is going to last? I, I'm asking you so no, much. The answer is yes. Um, yes, uh, and yes. <laughs> There's no question affiliate's going to be around. It's been around for 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, MLM's been around longer than that. You know, and again, people do, you know, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. You know, it's that easy. And so um, affiliate marketing is just a form, it's another form of marketing. It's, you know, me recommending and promoting something that I believe in. That's so really people, if they know our, if they hear this or they know us or they want to know us, they can get in touch with us on LinkedIn or Facebook or these are all social networks. Pinterest, uh, what's the others? Twitter. Uh, gosh, uh, but the thing is, Lineable, I can't even find myself. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah Lineable is another new. one. Uh, Facebook's another one. Um, oh, what else? I mean, one of the guys I met on LinkedIn. Um, is um, to start one called In the Tribe. I could give you his information. Then somebody else just gave me another one called, I think it's S H A R P. And you know, there's going to be there's going to be more and more, you know, more and more of these social networks that are going to continually pop up. I know one of them used to be called Referral Key, now it's called P O D. Um, but you know, one of the things I've learned in marketing is you, you know, it's like I test everything. You know, it's like if I'm putting my time and energy and effort into something, am I getting some kind of return in relationship to what my expectations are? Right. And I used to train mystics, oracles, psychic sages, seers, over 1,500, one at a time. That wasn't easy, folks, but I did it over a 50-some-odd-year period. But <laughs> after all the training, I decided I'd put some money into it, right? But it's a God. It's chosen. And people say, you know, that's hubris, but not really. You you know, I felt chose by God in the Gold Pyramid and why. And, I mean, in Houston, and then I met Stephen Halpern because of it, which was the father of uh, the New Age music, so to speak. But I loved his piano, and he gave me a CD out of the back of his car. I didn't even have to pay for it. Everybody else was paying 10 and, and he said I could send it to him if I want to, but don't worry about it because I kept saying, no, no, no. But, you know, it was just where had God put me. And uh, he's come on my radio show and helped me with the Global Pyramid Conference. Now, here Robert Butwin is helping me globally as an author with our global – information security or international intermodal community, whatever you want to call us in the future. But Robert, I, I'm, I am in TMI. So these apps, we're going to have TMI. We got to delete some of them off our, our phones. Do you know what's going to be next? If right now we're in app world and too much information coming out. So you're saying we've got to call or the tribe or, Find the niche, or I'm in a niche market: paranormal, social science. Uh, so I have TJ Mars ET, ACO Social Service Club, but these things are long. But what do you think is the next? You said tr all these people start in their little groups and niches, which we've been doing for years since 2006, and they're all free. So everybody's going, okay, we did this. Now what? Because we all we did was make all the international stock market people that own the stock in Google and Amazon and, and Facebook, or they made them rich. <laughs> I guess there's nothing wrong with that if they give us something to return. But do you have an insight, your own connection to God or source or uh, whatever you want to call it out there? Of what's – well, you know, I think it's going to be these group webinars – 
is going to be next. Like Zoom, you know, since the since what's going on, I mean, Zoom stock and, and the the amount of people using things like Zoom, which replaced Skype, and, and there's going to be uh, newer and better versions of Zoom coming out. I mean, you've got one called, oh, what is it? Uh, StreamYard is another one, uh, a way to uh, have like group webinars and be able to broadcast it and put it up on all these different sites. But again, I think the more that we're able to connect with people, keeping it human and feeding people information that will help them um, move forward or, or create more results. I mean, you know, think about it today. Anytime I want to know something, all I do is say, Google, what's my, what's the weather going to be like? Or Google, what's this? Or, you know, I mean, or Alexa, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, it's it's gotten to the point that we're able to plug into using technology. In fact, I was watching 60 Minutes uh, just this last week, and they've got a bunch of the people that survived the Holocaust, and they've you know they made or, or taken pictures of them, asked them like thousands of questions so that they can live on after they're dead. In fact, a couple of the people that they actually did the interviews of have died since that point in time and you know people are able to go up there and, you know wherever they're wherever they're at and ask them different questions and get answers all right so we still go with what my mother's uh close to her deathbed said uh you know jan we are the author of our own life story now i just know that my mom since then she had me start uh get the publishing company cuz her before she died uh she told me do the ebooks to keep our family together and uh grandpa joined uh morris my husband my late husband the last husband <laughs> 108 years and 9 months almost made it 190 he became a Kentucky colonel out of Kentucky but he asked me to run his ministry for him and it was a uh, uh Protestant, you know, but uh, that's okay. It was non-denominational, and I, my husband said to his own grandpa, you know, Grandpa, don't ask her to do that. And he was like, Why not? Uh, you're not going to do it. And he was blood, but he had been my my uh, Thomas Ray Morris, great agent for our government. One of the uh, he was an international hero. You know, he was a great man, and I want to keep up his name. That's why I kept it. You know, but. There's so many people that have legacies, and I, I, in one way or another, they were here on this radio show, believe it or not. And I deleted by accident Stanton T. Friedman, which is big, and he helped uh, me found the UFO Association. And George Fowler asked me not to forget him, but Stan Lee and Michael Jackson. Oh my gosh, so many people with the ACO Association, people that I've known, but I've lost their archives. So. This is the question people are asking me now. So I'm going to ask you, Robert, where are we going to keep cloud. their voices? The cloud. The cloud. Well, that's what yeah. everybody's been saying for since 2005, but it's 20 now. It's 15 years of cloud-based. But where is it going? Where is the information kept? Is that the mountains they're building in utah the nsa or what is it only for nsa but what about you and me and the people we collect in our history groups our archives where is it going if, you know it goes back to what i said earlier on the show my crystal ball is clear but it's not crystal clear you know the i mean i might know a lot but there's certain things i don't know where things are going to go <laughs> well, that's I don't know either. That's why I was asking you. We can go into what they call them quasi crystals is the big thing now. So I'll give you folks that quasi crystals and the G8 and helping lease over there in Maui. And we're doing all this and we're going to be teaching you about the dimensions. And if you're following the raw material that all of us at channel back in the eighties and before the IBI or with the IBA eighties and nineties groups, we were the uh, people that brought forth the first, second, 
third wave ideas with Dolores Cannon and the channeling, and a lot of people didn't believe in it, and a lot of people didn't believe in higher self. But it was basically spiritual science and teaching people through metaphysics how to get outside their own reality you know, where an apple is an apple. But when you think about it, is it really an apple because it's a thought? So we're going to start teaching you other dimensions, other realms, other densities, things that haven't really been talked about in the past that we call quantum physics, but it's above that in our Oregon. 